Hello, welcome to CM Videos, a YouTube channel where we like to help you get started with modeling. Today, the focus of the video is on modeling of short fiber composites. So I'm going to be showing you how you can undertake the creation of a representative volume element that looks like this, which is for the short fiber composites, and apply the right boundary conditions to it to simulate tensile and shear and compression deformation and the kind of result that you generate which is essentially um, a deformation showing different kind of simulations and the kind of simulation results that you will get the deformation profile will look like this and on top of this we are also going to extract the mechanical response of this material so that we can generate results that look like this which basically represents um, the behavior of this composite in terms of stress and strain the tension, compression and shear, as well as compressive response. We'll also look into how to obtain these effective properties of Young's moduli and strength for this composite. This is the purpose of this video. And if this is the kind of content you like, please do subscribe to this channel um, and click the like button so that you know other people can get to know about this video. So let's sit back and relax as we get started with this modeling. Okay, so the first thing we need to do is to look at the, at the micrographs of a short fiber composite. So there are two possibilities. You could have a random arrangement of micrographs um, of, of, of the fibers, which look like this, or an aligned arrangement, and I provided the, the link to these two micrographs. So this, the random ones are easier to, to design, um, and they're essentially the chop strand mat design of short fiber composite. The aligned ones will require a little bit of care, uh, but you tend to have better properties with the aligned one compared to the, uh, the random distribution. Um, the modeling approaches that one can take in doing this could be a micro scale approach where you individually model the fibers in their different positions and model also the metrics, apply the right boundary conditions and probably periodic boundary conditions to generate the stress strain response for the short fiber composite. Some other person can go to a mid level scale, which is called the meso scale, where you get the properties, effective properties of a a lamina or in the language of a short fiber composite, a chopped strand mat. So these are basically a random arrangement of these fibers to form a laminate. And then you can put them together in stacks to get the overall behavior of the composite. And then the final case is a macro scale where you kind of homogenize the response um, without clearly defining what this different um, chop strand mat composition would be. So this, these are the three possible approaches that you can use with short fiber composites. For this video, we're going to be using the microscale RV modeling of the fully aligned short e-glass fiber epoxy matrix composites. And the material that we'll be using will be an e-glass fiber system with an epoxy matrix. These are the properties of the composite and the matrix and the e-glass fiber that we'll be using. In particular, I want you to note here in the middle where you've got the tensile yield and the shear strength, because these things are particularly important when you're interested in modeling the short fiber response. And I've taken the properties of the epoxy from a you know, commercial website, which is quite a useful website for getting material properties called MatWeb. I've provided a link here. And for the e-glass fiber, I've taken it from a previous publication of mine. Now, one thing that you have to bear in mind when you're trying to create, uh, to model short fiber composites is to determine this quantity called the critical length of the fiber. Because it's short fiber doesn't mean that you can use any length of fiber. You want to use a minimum length of fiber to ensure effective load transfer from the matrix to the fiber. You can imagine if you have a very short fiber, then it wouldn't really be making a lot of contribution. So you want a finite length of fiber in order for the loading to be effectively transferred. And so the critical length calculation is important. How do we do that? Now, the formula to work with is this formula that says that the critical length is equal to sigma F subscript Fu, which is the tensile strength of the fiber times D, which is the diameter or you know the width of the fiber the, divided by two times the shear strength of the matrix. So this, this is what tends to be the formula. And if you make the calculation for the material that we're dealing with, which is a, an A-glass fiber with a strength of 2000 megapascal, a shear stress for the matrix of 1.5 megapascal, and the diameter of the, the fiber 
p50 microns you get about 109 points which is approximately 110 microns so that means for us to have effective load transfer in this short fiber composite we need to have lengths greater than that value the, the bigger the value the better for this study i've chosen to work with a fiber length of 120 micrometer and which is clearly bigger than LC, which is what we want. And the cross section that we're going to use in three dimension will be this. However, because our model is going to be in 2D, this rectangular, this cylindrical system becomes a rectangle of length 120 microns and height 15 microns. All right, now, how do we design the short fiber composites? And at the core of this, that we need to have a randomness. So again, I go back to my Monte Carlo gen, um, software which I use to generate this random distribution of inclusions within a rectangular RV or quadrilateral RV. Again, please look at the, the description section of this to find the link to how you can get hold of this software. So we use Monte Carlo Gen 2D uh, to create this random representation of the inclusions. And, and what you would find here is basically that these you know pink systems are the you know the rectangular the, the fibers and what we really need is the point, the start point of the fiber, this corner point of the fibers. Okay, that's what we need. And then we can now generate the, the random. So it's a start point that is randomly distributed. Um, and then the metrics, the, the fiber take this formulation formation from there. So of course, Monte Carlo Gen 2D would help us extract these material points, which represents the start point fiber systems. So we start with this and then we take that information. And of course, the overall length of the RV that we're going to be using here is going to be 720 microns and the height will be 200 microns. But these were the parameters that we set up at the beginning. I wanted to have a total length of fiber that is probably six times the you know length of each individual fiber so that we can fit in as many fibers here and height wise you know because the thickness here is 15 so you can fit in maybe another 10 if you decide to back to back here so the idea is to have a represent volume element that is useful enough for at least capturing the behavior of this composite the case studies that i want to study to investigate this would be these three four case studies so we start off first with pulling the rv in the x direction intention which means along the main fiber alignment. So the fibers are aligned in this case. So you get that information. And then the other one is to try and do a tensile deformation. So this is where you're loading transverse to the main fiber alignment. And then the third case is you do a shear. Then finally, you do a compressive response. The idea really is here to get some kind of representation of the mechanical response of this uh, RV of the short fiber composites. So that at least you give you a picture of what this composite is doing as if it were in practice. So that's the objective of what we want to do today. So let's go ahead and jump into our backers as we begin the actual modeling of this. Okay, here we are in Abacus. So we are going to create this domain and so we're going to use a script which I'd already written, you know, and this script will be available for you to download from the uh, description section of this video. So what we do is file, we'll run script and then we'll find the location. So I'll put the location where the script is found. So basically this script is this, it's located in that environment and that's the short fiber virtual domain script so i'll click on that so what it will do is so it will run through and do exactly what i've just said um it basically creates the domain and trims all the boundary fibers the way they should be and voila we have actually a randomly oriented fiber composite so what are the things we need to do so we need to look at the materials so what would the fiber be okay so i need to supply the properties of the fiber Again, I try to leave this thing open so that, you know, if you're using this script, you will then have to supply whichever values of fiber that you want. So this will be zero point. So that's for that. And then that of the metrics, which is the epoxy metrics. So the strength of the epoxy will be 4.5. The Young's modulus of the epoxy 4.9 at zero point. Maybe you could work with 0 0.4. And the plasticity of the epoxy is 65 uh, e to power 6 and 0, 0.0 so these are the properties and then we can do a section assignment that will click on section assignment select just the metrics alone assign those properties select everything again hold down hold down and um, control so you deselect the metrics leaving the fibers behind that gives us the fiber and then we can check the material so that looks all right now the next bit is we need to mesh this domain so it's recommended 623, but I could 
do go as far as 6.5 okay so that i have a finely meshed domain um, and then we'll select this structure i'm going to use a triangular element shape to do that and then we mesh the domain so we've got a, a good domain uh, with all the mesh in, in place what I'm, I'm going to want you to check when you do this is what is the quality of the mesh so look at the mesh the entire mesh and you click done so it's coming up with three four eight eight and um, number of nodes this is important because we're going to apply use bbc gen which is a code that i've written and the current version bbc gen Lite, only allows you to go up to 4000 nodes however if you want to go for a higher number of nodes discretization then you have to get a full version of the code so this is what we have here so i wanted to make sure that if you're following this script you'll be able to at least mesh your domain so we've got 3488 which is all right now so there are a few other things that we need to do with this so uh, let's just go keep working our way down so the assemblies are fine so we are going to have to create a set so i'm going to call this my corner nodes okay my corner nodes and those are basically the nodes at the four corners of this rv so you press down shift and pick them independently okay so all four are selected so this is important and then we can now create our loading step Okay, so our history output needs to be, so I'm going to call it my corner notes history output. So this will be based on the set of corner notes and the history outputs that we're interested will be RF1, RF2, U1, U2, um, coordinates in the one direction and coordinates in the two direction. So these basically are the reaction forces, the displacement and the coordinate positions of those four uh, corner nodes so we note those so that's fine and then a boundary condition so x so x back roller initial boundary condition so basically we need to pick the two corner nodes in the x direction okay and then we hold it in the x direction so y base roller the same kind of thing we pick up those two points Okay, so that's in the Y direction. And then finally, we need to apply our extension. In this case, extension. But that will be an initial loading step. So we apply it on that point. Okay, the overall length here is, um, is 720. So we're going to do 20% this, you know, elongation or displacement. So that will be 144 will be the length that will create a 20% uh, strain within the material so we've got that all done um, so what we probably would do here so if I just rename this and call this case one so we know this will be our case one all right and everything is done so we could then create a job for it so we have here the aligned XFC extension so xfc extension so why not let's do the other cases so if we then copy and then create case 2 so we're basically going to use case 2 second case here so every other thing will remain the same remember what we're trying to do here is the tensile load in the y direction so i'm going to rename this and call it y tension and then open it up so I'm going to move the loading point from that point to here. Right. So it will not be in the one direction anymore. It will be in the Y direction. So we've moved the displacement to that point to create a tensile deformation on this domain. So we'll create the job. Okay. And we'll do that. So we'll go back and create a copy to create the third scenario, which will be the shear. So now we open up the shear case think about the boundary condition we are sharing on the front end here so the x back roller would no more be a roller support it will be a fixed support so if i rename that and i'm going to call it x back fixed so it's fixed in the x and y direction the front end the y base roller will have to go so i'm going to suppress that so that there will be no nothing and then we have to put some displacement on the front end so we create a new boundary condition which will be x front roller okay and that will mean picking those two points there and here 
So we pick those two points and so we are constraining it in the one direction because we are applying our load in the Y. So what we have here is X tens. I'm going to rename it and call it X Y shear. Okay. If I open that up, so I'm going to then pick the region, no more from where it was before, but here, and it will be in the two direction as well. Okay. With a load of 144. Okay. This is fine. 144. Just a slight correction. If we look at the short fiber in the tensile case, because we're applying loading in the tensile direction, we need to apply 20% loading here. And 20% of this length, 200, is 40. So it shouldn't be 144, but 40, so that we have 20% of 200, which is the length, the height of this. Okay, so this way we have a 20% displacement in the y direction, 20% displacement in the x, and 20% displacement in shear. The final case is the compression in the x direction. So we we'll go back to case one because it's similar to case one. Create a copy of case one and then call that IV, case number IV. So all we need to do with case number IV is in tensile case, we just rename that and call it X compression, S comp. Okay. If I open that up, so everything will remain the same except that I'm changing this loading into a compressive value. So if you see here, it shows that this is a compressive deformation. So again, we can create the loading. So, so we see here that we have all the four cases created um, and, and ready to run. However, we have not implemented periodic boundary condition, which is what we need to make this simulation easy to run. So what we're going to do is I'm going to right click on all of them and write the input. So write input, select the next one, write input, select Okay, select the next one, right input. Okay, and then the last one, right input. Okay, so got all three cases, I've, I've run them, so I had to. So you've got the three cases written down there. So where are they located currently? So we we'll go to file, set working directory, copy the link, because it tells you where the current directory is, then open the window. So if we go to this, so you find out that those are saved here. So I'll copy them, copy. Okay. Now, when you download PBC gen, which is what we are using, if you download PBC gen, what you are using. So you end up finding that the results you will get will be this. So you paste that information in there, replace them. Okay. So I already have them. So first paste them in here. Your PBC gen line light code is there, the script is also here. So we're going to use this environment to run, apply periodic boundary condition and complete this the simulation. So I'm copying that link. So I'll copy that link. Then I'll go to MATLAB, paste that link at the address bar of MATLAB to make this my current working directory. So I now have a current working directory comprising of all those um, input files. However, they don't have periodicity implemented in them. PBC gen is there. So we could PBC gen light. So I'll just type that in, enter. So this will now say, okay, do you want to pick which, which of them do you want to start with? So I want to start with the extension case. Okay. So what it will do is we'll run through the code, apply periodic boundary condition, gives you a little snapshot of the boundary conditions, uh, plotted the values in the boundaries that it's going to use. And also there are all the cells involved with the corner nodes as well. Now it gives you a little bit of update of what it's done. Basically the original input file without PBC has been updated to an input file with PBC in, in corporate. So now we have to run that model. So I'm going to change my directory to the current directory. So change directory to jobs aligned. So I'll make that my current working directory. Then I get this rename control C to copy that link. Then exclamation sign abacus job and then i use interactive because what interactive will do is that it will show me as it's running what is happening so i'm running abacus calling abacus within matlab trying to run this simulation trying to get the results generated and as it's running it's showing me details of all the model files that are being generated in there so at the end of it it will inform me here that this job has completed so we're going to repeat this process of 
running PBCGen and running Abacus for all the other remaining three cases, and then we generate all the results. Okay, so here we are. We've run all four cases and we've got their results uh, stored in these folders, in these folders of job aligned X and that. So what we're going to then do is to run through them individually to look at the result. So we're going to either go back to Abacus and, and show and show them individually. So, so now we go back here, file. So I'll put the link to where, so we're starting with the extensile case, change this to LDB. So this gives us an idea of what the tensile scenario will look like. Okay, so this is a for mistress distribution for the extensile load case. And if we animate that, then it can give us an example of what's happening here, of how the deformation is, is happening. So basically, there's a lot of stress distribution within the fiber and also in the matrix. And in particular, you notice what happens around when the fibers came, come together. So if we then look at the plastic strain, so you could see the matrix, how it's plastically deforming um, in the extensile case. Um, and there is this kind of shear banding formation as the matrix travels. This region of weakness is probably where failure is going to happen in this extensile case. So these are the classic behavior that you will see with, um, you know, with a, a, a shape, this kind of material. So why not let's look at the next one. So, which is the Y tension. So again, you get a, a similar kind of behavior, but this time around, it's a little bit more interesting. So you've got a clear evidence of periodicity in all domain. The fibers are now having to bend and adjust their positions due to the loading imposed on them. Some are seeing compression, some are seeing tensile deformation. These two fibers that are on those edges are quite rigid, so you don't see any matrix behavior around that. So but it's a real good case, a classic good case of, of you know periodicity in this material. So if we then animate that as well, so we can see what's happening. So basically it's being pulled in the y direction and the system is compressing accordingly. Now, what about the plastic strain? So again, you could see the formation of, of, of this shear bands clearly across the material as load is being redistributed. And then you get a really nice um, distribution showing how this behave this system will behave in, in, in Y compression. So let's look at the third case, the XY shear. So this is now where you what you notice here is that okay, the back end is fixed and the front end is being you know, it's sliding upwards in shear deformation. So if we look at the animation, okay, we could reduce the speed. And then we could also look at the plastic strain. So you could see it shows us some interesting, clearly this fiber here is, you know, it's, it's, being, it's not allowing deformation of the metrics. And so you get a stress build up in that particular zone. Um, but overall, you get a really nice distribution showing the shared formation of this material. All right, so the final one is the compression response. And it looks a bit like what you found in tension, it's just that this system is undergoing compressive response. So there's a clear squashing together of the metrics in certain zones in those regions. There's a clear picture of what's happening as there is a buildup of stress in the material. and all these quick squiggly lines are really very interesting because they tell you because it's a story about the stress distribution um, in this material and this is also why it's important you know when you're looking at this to make sure you have a finite length so if you look at the stress alone and maybe look at the stress in one one direction so you can see you need a finite region through which so that these fibers can actually do a bit of absorbing of the load from the matrix to create this enhancement effect, which is what a composite has to be. And it's really this length, this region. So you can see higher the, higher the density of the fibers, the more the interaction between the fibers. So if this fiber is all by itself like here, then it just have its own effective zone in this small region. Likewise there. However, when it's in proximity with one another, then you find that this exchange and transfer of load is quite significant around them. And this is what, where the enhancement of the load bearing capacity of this uh, short fiber composite come in. And this is why you need to have a significant length of fibers, probably with a higher fiber density, to make sure that you have this enhanced interaction, which will lead to enhancement in the effective properties of this composite. So that's what we can observe just numerically by looking at the results. So we can put them all together. So here we are, we have them all together. And 
we've gone back to show them as plastic strain so you could see each of them behaving differently so this is a tensile deformation this is a compressive deformation this is a y tension this tensile deformation and this is a shear deformation so we put them all together and you can see some interesting behavior especially the shear, shear band formation uh, through the domain depending on the kind of loading you get how those things can be quite different um, some of them are bending, some of them are not bending, and, and all that. So these are interesting conclusions that you can generate from this. But what would really be interesting is if we can only try and see if we can extract the actual physical properties to make sure we can get a comparison between um, these different designs in quantitatively, not just by looking at contour plot. So what we're going to do here is, so we're going to start off with this window here. So if you click on that button, so which is we want to create the xy data of this continue so this will now bring us into this window where we have already written as part of the simulation this xy data so what i'm going to do is i'm going to press down shift and select all those these are the coordinates of the coordinate nodes and now go to control select it press down control and select that individually Okay, so we're dealing with the extensile case. So we've got all those selected. All right, so I missed up a two, two. So we've got all that selected. Now we can plot this data. Right, so we've got our data. It doesn't really look good. So we've got a specimen force and position data. So we go to plugin, tools, Excel utilities from current plot. Okay, so what this will do is I will export this data that we have in this window into an Excel file. So we have it all written down here in Excel file, where the first column is time, the second is the X1 data, time again, X, you know, in for node two. So I'm going to copy all of that. So we're going to use it to do a bit of post-processing. And I provided you with this data, this data sheet. So if we just go to the end, this is an Excel sheet that, you know, created to, to help with the analysis in, in the way that we want to do this. So now the information that we got from exporting the plot directly from Abacus, we will now get it into the first column and paste that information there. So it would now, I've already put the, pro, the, the, the information gives our data here. So you can see that this is the node one called corner node one with the position and in the X direction, the same all through. So at the end of that, I use this virtual principle, virtual work to extract the force based on these four corner nodes, their forces and their display um, coordinate positions. So if you want to understand what's how I did it, so you can check individually for each of these and see actually what, what has gone on. But I also will refer you to a video that I put in the card where I spoke a little bit more on how you can actually do this to understand the principle. But do look at that video if you're a bit confused. The same thing with strain. So the strain was also calculated based on the displacement in the X direction and the original length of that RV. So this is like the normal strain. And the last bit here is basically how the stress was calculated. The stress is essentially that force term divided by the volume, the force term divided by the volume, because again, that's the principle of virtual work that is required here. So you get a volume average stress for this. Again, please look at the other video that I talked about, which is in the card for you to understand how this is done. So this is what I've done for the extensile case. So you can go back to the Abacus model Open the next case, which is the Y tension. Now click this X, operate X, Y data for it. Select them as usual, press them individually and pick them up. So again, it's only a few of them, just eight of them. Plot that data to so generate the input that you want. Choose Excel utility, current plot, get that information. Okay. So when you get that information, it will export that into this Excel data. So we copy that Excel information. Now go to the template that we have. So in the Y compress, right? So we can paste that in that window. Okay. So you get the Y tension data. Everything is correct. And then you repeat the same for the share case. The, there's a slight change in how the share is computed in terms of the force. Because what you find in share is that it's a, it's a planar behavior. So your force in the 
x direction will have to multiply with the displacement in the y direction and vice versa so again i need you to check this if you're interested in this and see how you can extract the actual uh, stress stress data from that and then finally we'll do the same for compression what i have done here is to okay specify the length the width and the height because it's a 2d system the height or the thickness of the rv is a unit depth it you know so it's just one doesn't really matter um now the young's modulus is calculated by doing what by looking at what's happening in the elastic region of the system so in this case the elastic region using those first three points you know you could as well use the two points it doesn't really matter now the strength is calculated by taking the global maximum in absolute terms of this. So this is basically the ultimate tensile strength of this material. So we do that individually for all four cases, then put all the data together. So we end up with this result. So what do we see? So basically the tensile case extension is the green region. Y tension is a little bit less. Okay. So in the transverse direction, you don't have this reinforcing effect of the fiber in the transverse direction as significant so it's a little bit lower um and then the third case is um, so if you think about this the metric strength is 65 so having those fibers in place it just you know doesn't really contribute as much compared to in the other direction where this metric strength was 65 now there is nearly 12 megapascal increase in strength uh for only a 20 percent addition of the shore fiber composites okay and, and and the same applies in in the shear so the shear is an interesting case you get a lot of you know in, in, in influence of the shear you know in the random distribution because now as you try to bend the domain the shear the orientation of the fibers will obviously play a lot of role in trying to resist the shear deformation so you get a, a lot of shear strength increase um, due to the fibers now the other things to look at are also the Young's moduli e values and the compression, X compression and Y extension, not much difference. And you can look at all the results and, and these are the kind of information you will get from this. So if this is the kind of content you like, please again do subscribe to this channel and please click the like button so that the YouTube algorithm will continue to push this video out to again people like you who may like this kind of content. Thank you very much and I'll see you in the next video. Bye-bye.